This is a video update on my 5 channel micro park fly receiver. It's uh, based on the FR Sky micro 5 channel receiver that I've reprogrammed to work with a high tech 2.4 gigahertz system. Um, I've described that how I did this in a, a previous video, as I'm sure many of you guys have uh, seen. Uh, the actual receiver itself weighs around 2 grams with the case, uh, 1.6 without. Um, it uses the micro. Pico blade, Molex Pico blade connectors, um, different to the Spectrum ones, which are the JST, uh, but you'll see all the Hobby King servos use all the same, and I also believe Fataba's micro receivers use the same connectors. Um, one thing to point out this is a part fly receiver, so it's not a full range receiver. Um, you get about 300 meters range, which is about 1,000 feet, which for, to be honest, planes that would need a 1.6 gram, 2 gram receiver. It's uh, ideal, and by the time you've flown out that far, you won't be able to see the thing anyway. So it's ideal for pop part flyers and indoor aircraft, especially being this light. Uh, one thing to point out, the bind lead that supplied um, FR Sky got the actual colours wrong. It, the top one, and you plug it in, looks like the negative should be at the top, and the signal should be at the bottom. That's the wrong way around. The actual signal is uh, at the top, and the black should be at the bottom. So it goes from the bottom, black for negative, middle for positive and the top one white is the signal. Um, the actual Hobby King linear servos have these the wrong way around as well so you need to use a little pair, of, uh, a little screwdriver to lift up the connectors and swap them around to the right way. To bind this thing you need to firstly put your transmitter into bind mode so we turn that off. On the high tech kit you need to push the button on the back while switching it on and then hitting yes. Um, on the back you'll see the blue lights flashing. It's important that you have the blue light flashing. This is on the uh, later firmwares, I believe 3 and onwards, which is the minima binding mode. Um, if it's red, that's the optimi optima binding mode, which is the telemetry stuff. Because it's a non-telemetry receiver, you need to make sure it's on the minimum mode. If it's not, you just push the button on the back till it beeps and changes to blue. So once you've done that with the transmitter, you need to put the bind lead into channels 1 and 5, so the two end ones, and then you need to get a battery. And what I've done here is just put a connector, a servo extension lead onto a Molex connector just to make it easier. Um, and then you plug that into any channel, and the LED, the green LED, will go from a slow blinking to a fast blinking. This happens so quickly so you didn't really see it. Um, the slow blink can mean it's a searching. If you're too near to the transmitter, you might find it is slow blinking, so just move it a bit further away because the receiver ends up getting saturated. Um, and once it's fast blinking, you know it's been bound. So you disconnect the power, take out the bind lead, and then you just need to restart your transmitter to take it out of bind mode. And once you've done that, you can plug some servos into your receiver, like so. There's a collection of different servos I'm going to stick in here. Apply some power. Make sure we get them connected the right way. The LED will go from a flashing red when it's got no signals. If I turn that off, you'll see it'll have a flashing red. That means it's got no signal, and once it locks onto a signal, turn this back on, you'll see it goes solid red. Um, and if we put this on the bench, you'll notice, if I point it so you can actually see it, if you wiggle the sticks, you can see it responds to the input. Um, one other thing to point out is it's got a fail safe. To set the fail safe up, all you need to do is remove the power and remove the servos. Get your bind lead, stick it between channels 5 and this time channel 2, and then apply the power. And the key thing here, once you apply the power, You'll need to wait for the LED. It'll take about five seconds, and you'll get the two green and the red LED going together. 
uh, and then once it's done that you, meet, you know now that the fail safe position has been set as uh, so you get a second or so just to set it up in the, in the right positions uh, and once that's done you now have a fail safe so if we take that off put the servo back onto it we we'll use this nice orange hobby king servo so stick that in Remove the servo, power off the transmitter. You can see it's locked onto failsafe. Uh, so for a second, if it has no signal, it will stay in the hold position, and after that, it will then go into the failsafe position. You can see by the flashing LED, uh, it's searching for a signal. As soon as the receive transmitter is powered on again, you can see it's a nice quick relock on. Just again, just to show you. Off, we turn it on, we've got the sticks, and then hit yes to transmit. You can see the lock on is pretty damn quick. So, these receivers I'm going to sell a couple on uh, eBay at first. These are still uh, effectively prototypes, I've tested them extensively on my own models, and a couple of friends have got the friends have got them and they've tested them out as well. And they all seem rock solid, so I'm going to test uh, send a couple out. I'll start with three uh, and see how well they sell. And uh, if they say it works so well, I'll put a few more on and, uh, for people that are interested. Um, if you see the RC Group's post, you can uh, find out a bit more information. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know any comments at the bottom of the YouTube video, or ideally RC Groups, you get it easier to respond on RC Groups, um, with any questions you have. Thank you for watching.